just hatred of men and everything even vaguely associated with them. Barbie is like the deformed... God damn it, I'm trying to get a drink here and you're just gonna say shit like that while I'm trying to grab a drink? What's wrong with you? What the <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yes, Barbie is a hate-filled propaganda film. My god. Will, you're usually more subtle. What is this? Jesus. <laughs> Alright, let me go ahead and dig up some Critical Drinker, because we, we, uh, Phantom Initiative, we will be having a Critical Drinker video coming up, um, and he did one of the more popular reviews of Barbie. So let's see, because I, <laughs> of Sarah course, a fucking course, oh my god, uh, you got, you gotta show this to you guys, of course, of course. Why not? So, uh, Critical Drinker has already, uh, wait, where is it at? It's after hour. No, yeah, it's after hours. So he did a video, Marvel's delayed again. Now, I want to stress, um, any movie that has any shooting left to do in it is going to get delayed during the strike. It just is. They cannot do any shooting with sh SAG actors right now. They can't. Um, they can't do any writing, and they can't do any shooting of SAG actors until the strikes are resolved. So, uh, like, I just saw an article the other day talking about, oh, Witcher could be canceled. Uh, it's scheduled to start shooting in September, and yeah, they won't be shooting in September until the strikes are resolved. Um, there's going to be lots of clickbait about, like, stuff getting delayed, and lots of stuff will get delayed, and lots of stuff will get canceled until the strikes are resolved. It's such, it's so dumb. But anyways, uh, he, Critical Drinker here has done one of the, it's almost as popular as Ben Shapiro's. Uh, he, Ben Shapiro's was at 2.2 million. This Barbie video's at, uh, 2.1. It's significantly shorter. Um, and, you know, Will, Will Jordan here, Mr. Critical Drinker, will do his usual thing. He will be, uh, trying to pretend like he's not a conservative right-wing nut job, but, you know, he will, like, code it in this layer of, I'm just a drunk uh, Scottish man, and I'm just going to review a movie. And eventually, like, I bet you that we'll get to the cringe fairly quickly in this one, but he might wait a while for the cringe. We might wait a while. Let's see what he does. Now, before I dive into this review properly, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the hard work and genius PR campaign of the Warner Brothers marketing department. You guys really pulled off a miracle with this one, successfully duping all of us, including me, into believing believing that Barbie was going to be just another colourful, light-hearted, easy-going family comedy with some cheeky self-aware humour, ironic meta-gags, and probably capped off with a blandly inoffensive female empowerment message about girls learning the value of their own potential. That sums it up. Um, I would say uh, it also has a male empowerment message about men having uh, potential as well. But yeah. What none of us expected was 114 minutes of spiteful, bitter, mean-spirited, borderline unhinged- Jesus, he's gonna go right into it. Okay, I'm gonna grab a drink. Hold on. <sighs> hatred of men and everything even vaguely associated with them. Barbie is like the deformed- God damn it, I'm trying to get a drink here and you're just gonna say shit like that while I'm trying to grab a drink? What's wrong with you? What the- <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yes, Barbie is a hate-filled propaganda film. My god. Will, you're usually more subtle. What is this? Jesus. <laughs> mutated rage child of Captain Marvel, Ghostbusters 2016, and She-Hulk. So I'm Let me grab a drink. Fuck, dude. Oh my god. Oh, so triggered by the, the movie about uh, uh, dolls with no genitalia. This is so goddamn triggered. I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. 
It is pure brain cancer in movie form, and I was genuinely shocked by the sheer, undisguised contempt this film has towards 50% of the human population. Is that what it has? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, this is an experience. I will say, Will Jordan is more uh, entertaining than Ben Shapiro. Um, he's getting to the point a hell of a lot faster. Jesus. <laughs> it's just so, like, offended. Oh my god. The movie about dolls was mean to me, even though it wasn't. But it was. It was. Listen. Listen. Um, it wasn't actually mean to men. But I am a snowflake that can't handle any criticism. So when I have to experience any criticism, it just... It offends me so much and I can't take it. <laughs> That's Critical Drinker right now. And watching this film was one of the most miserable, demoralizing, unpleasant experiences I've ever had as a movie critic and genuinely made me question where our society is heading. But the review must be done. The, the, the movie about the dolls. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what Jack Burton always says at a time like this? Old Jack always says, what the hell? The movie begins with a ripoff. I'm, I'm sure you love uh, uh, Jack Burton, a, a movie who is uh, a, a character who is routinely shown to be a goofball and kind of worthless. Like, I will give Jack Burton credit. He does get the bad guy at the end. But that is like it. He like... He is pretty worthless in that movie outside that. <laughs> Homage to 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, it, it, so you, you want to say it was a flat out ripoff. Uh, the quality seems a little low. Can I boost it? Uh... Of course, with Critical Drinker, you can never tell if the quality is low or the video quality. Like the base video quality could actually be bad. Uh, so like, you, you might be shocked to hear this, Will Jordan. This movie is a comedy, so it has fun with... Uh, comedy elements where little girls discover barbie for the first time and gleefully cast off their boring and oppressive baby dolls in an orgy of violence and destruction and if the vision yeah how dare it be a, a joke and have fun with that Joe metaphor of little girls happily destroying the embodiment of motherhood to focus their lives instead on a shallow and materialistic piece of consumerist trash is lost on you then i don't know what to say man but you're probably the target audience for this movie anyway the film exp so offended, he just can't handle it. Oh my god. Explains that all the Barbie and Ken dolls live together in Barbie land, a kind of magical counter- He's usually so much more subtle than this. Like, uh, he's not, like, subtle. It's weird to call the critical drinker subtle, but that's usually it. Usually when he does his reviews, like, the first minute or two will just kind of be, like, fluff. Like, like, uh, you know, oh, you know, here's, here's the move. I'm a drunk guy, ha ha. You, maybe there's a funny start. This is just instantly just like, I'm a triggered snowflake and they're mean to men. They gave slight criticism to men and I can't handle it. <laughs> Apart to the real world, which is portrayed as a peaceful feminist utopia where all the important jobs are done by the Barbies and the Kens just kind of exist. They've got no inherent value, they contribute nothing, they have no power or say in how their society is run, and they're basically looked down on as a bit silly and irrelevant by the Barbies. Oh my goodness, what could the writers possibly be trying to tell us about their views on men? Anyway, this is where we meet. No. No. Uh, because that's the point. The point is the Kens are an underclass and they need to rise up. <laughs> Meet stereotypical Barbie, who's busy living her best life, partying with her friends and treating her boyfriend stereotypical. That is a great point, Duck Shoes. He's so conservative that Barbie is a transgressive idol to him. <laughs> Ken, like absolute dog shit. Who's the hero of this thing again? Anyway, things suddenly change when Barbie starts experiencing emotional changes and physical flaws like flat feet and cellulites. See, because Barbie world is a reflection of the real world, the Barbie's appearances change depending on how their real life owner plays with them. Wait, what? Do you have any idea how many Barbie dolls must get broken or thrown in trash compactors or set on fire or eaten by family? That's what weird Barbies are. Um, they literally go over that in the movie. Pets every single day. 
then the place would look like the Omaha beach scene from Saving Private Ryan. At any moment, Barbies could suddenly get torn apart, or melted, or crushed right in front of their friend's eyes. Jesus, that's like a horrific existential nightmare. But I guess you're not supposed to think too much about that. Internal consistency in a movie like Barbie- you're, I love how you're talking about this stuff and you're showing the weird Barbie. Like, they bring that up, dude. <laughs> is rarer than a mainstream media outlet willing to give this movie an honest review. So the only solution is for Barbie to journey into the real world, find the girl who plays with her and get her to be happy again. And Ken tags along for the ride because he's got nothing better to do than simp for Barbie. Unfortunately the Yes, that is, uh, Ken is made as essentially an accessory to Barbie, so there's a logic to that. Like, there was, like, I did see, I'm kind of surprised Ben Shapiro didn't bring it up. Like, I've seen people complain that, oh, Ken is low testosterone. He just, he's not a man enough. And it's like, he's fucking Ken. What the fuck did you expect? He's not G.I. Joe. The real world turns out to be an oppressive, patriarchal hellscape that's utterly dominated by men. Like, one guy literally walks up to Barbie and slaps her in the ass, in the middle of a crowded boardwalk, in broad daylight, in front of her boyfriends. Now, you might think that... Okay, number one, uh, that shit has happened in real life. Uh, it's not cool, but that will happen in real life. Number two, Ken is not her boyfriend. Fun fact, did you watch the movie? This would afford the writers a chance to demonstrate a little bit of nuance in their storytelling, maybe portray the real world as both good and bad, and sh- It does! Holy shit! <laughs> Sharp contrast to the simplistic, idyllic innocence of Barbie worlds. Kind of like in Enchanted, where the protagonist gets taken out of her cartoon homeworld and has to learn to navigate the complexities and difficulties of real life, ultimately growing and maturing as a person along the way. But then again, that movie actually had a likeable main character, a decent story, and wasn't written by people who despised half the human population. But no- Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 men getting any criticism at all means bad movie woke propaganda. <laughs> Jesus, these guys are fucking snowflakes, I swear. <laughs> The real world and all the men in it are shown to be universally, irredeemably horrible. Because of course they are. Anyway, Barbie eventually finds the kid who plays with her, who turns out to be an asshole communist activist feminist that I think the- Really? Really? Um... Source? Like, the kid that plays with her is an asshole communist feminist. Wow, that's a, that's a big read. You, you got a source on that one? <laughs> movie wants us to empathize with, but fuck me, for the life of me, I could not tell you why. Ken, on the other hand, discovers the patriarchy is very much to his liking, mainly because for the first time in his entire life, people actually show him basic respect and human decency. You know, sometimes I get the impression this film isn't saying what the filmmakers think it's saying. So when Barbie eventually returns... It's saying exactly what was intended that men and women uh both make mistakes and that uh they it's important to learn about each other and respect each other <laughs> Mr. Barbie Land, she discovers to her horror that Ken has brought the patriarchy back with him and turned the whole place into a giant frat party in the space of, like, a day. Finally, a plot event I can- I know, it's almost like the movie's unrealistic. Get behinds. It's kind of funny, though, because it did make me question- The movie about dolls with no genitalia that walk around and have sentience, and, uh, where there's a giant fight scene that is actually turns into a- dance choreograph number. I know it's weird to hear about this gritty movie being unrealistic. Question how the supposedly intelligent, empowered, and self-confident Barbies were so easily subjugated by Ken and the others. This is the kind of awkward little paradox that keeps coming up when you try to constantly portray women as strong, empowered, infallible, kick-ass girl bosses who can- Is that- is that how the women were portrayed in this movie? Is that they were kick-ass, infallible girl bosses? Like, I get sick of this conservative read of movies. Um, women just, like, being lead characters means they're kick-ass, badass girl bosses. And it's like, no. The women in this movie were not perfect. Like, literally the beginning of the movie, uh, Barbie Land is a, a matriarchy. It's, it's women rule the world, and men and the Kens are just kind of second-class citizens. They're not being portrayed as uh, perfect at all. Um, 
you can say they are, but they're not. Because the whole point is that it needs changed. You can do anything and beat anyone, but you also need them to be helpless oppressed victims of male domination. You can't have your cake and eat it. What? What? Ah. Uh. Let's throw all nuance to this curve, guys. We, we, we hate fucking nuance. We can't handle it. Fuck it. Yeah. Not to worry, though, because Barbie uses her newfound powers of feminism to free the other Barbies from the evil Ken's oppression, and because they're all dumb as fuck, she's able to trick them into fighting each other until eventually they just give up and surrender. Now, you might think that after all these wild swings between male and female domination, the logical way forward would be for Barbie Land to adopt a more equal system where both sides are given power and respect. Which is what they do, but yeah. Perfect. Perhaps teaching the audience that for all our differences, men and women are both pretty awesome, and maybe we'd do well to work together instead of unfairly elevating one group above the other. But nope, the Barbies go right back to being in charge of everything again, and the Kens slide back into a meaningless, depressing existence of being irrelevant second-class citizens. Congratulations on missing the, the, the huge part of the ending, but sure, whatever. And that, I think, is supposed to be a happy ending? Fuck. Honestly, I'm struggling to find the right words to properly express just how monumentally awful this film is. It's like a serial killer dressed in a Pikachu outfit. Superficially, it might look bright and cheerful and cute, but beneath the appealing facade, there's something genuinely horrible and sinister. This is a- I, I, okay, Will Jordan, I want you to tell me where the Barbie movie touched you on the doll. Just- you're acting so hurt by this thing. My god. A movie made by people who utterly despise men and masculinity, or any kind of traditional gender roles of any kind, and make absolutely no attempt to hide it. So you're a woman who wants to be a mother or a homemaker? Screw you, fascist. You're a man who wants to be- Is that- is that the message of the movie? I missed that. Be assertive, ambitious, confident, and successful? Well, that clearly makes you a misogynist, don't you know? It's I miss that message too. I like how you can just insert your own messages into the movie. Like you're counting on your fan base to not watch this and not draw their own conclusions. It's one of the key things these guys depend on. You you guys either, like, they, they need their fans to either not watch this or just go into it with the preset conclusions that these guys give them so that they that's all they see. They're depending on that because any proper analysis of this movie will not end up with these results. It's so fucking divisive and unnecessary. It's like they had a perfect opportunity to unify audiences behind a simple message of reconciliation and equal opportunity, but they which they did. But you know what? Let's just ignore that because that's not that's not useful to the propaganda i'm sorry the the review you're making they just couldn't help themselves they were so filled with rage and hatred and bitterness that it just had to come spewing out onto the screen as far as this film's concerned women are simply amazing and men and everything they do are utterly irredeemably shit they way to miss the point they might be grudgingly tolerated, provided they play by the rules, but they have no inherent value and can never be trusted with any kind of power or responsibility. And the only way to guarantee a peaceful and harmonious society is for women to be put in charge of everything and men to be docile, powerless servants who exist only to please them. Jesus, wow, this is, uh, this is way more, uh, on the nose than he usually is. Like... Usually he tries to hide the fact that he's just a, a right-wing grifter. Um, but man, he's just like rubbing it in your face with this one. Not a great plan. Wow, what an inspiring message for impressionable young girls. The thing is, none of this would have been quite so insidious if the marketing hadn't done everything in its power to keep it a secret. I mean, for all their faults, She-Hulk, Ghostbusters 2016, and Captain Marvel all wore their feminist hearts on their sleeves. Okay. Let's not pretend like the marketing hid this from you and like you didn't realize uh, what it was going in. It was 100% pretty clear that like the projections on this movie, like people expect this to do well. They weren't expecting it to do super well. And when the numbers started coming in, like Ben did that picture. And then once Ben released that picture, just all you right wingers just started jumping on this movie. Ah, oh, it's the worst thing ever. Ah, oh. um, 
let's not pretend like it was like some sort of hidden feminist agenda. This was a grift that you guys all decided to jump on this movie. Bandwagoning. You knew exactly what you were getting into when you went to see them, but Barbie really is a wolf in sheep's clothing, tricking people into watching it by promising one thing and delivering something very different. And I guess that's the thing that really struck me about this film. A lot of parents will have been duped into taking their daughters along to watch this movie, probably- I, 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 I took my daughter. She enjoyed it too expecting the kind of breezy, colourful, family-friendly movie that was advertised, only to find themselves confronted with this spiteful- I mean, again, it's PG-13. If a parent's really concerned about stuff like that, they can look it up. It's- they don't hide that. It, I do actually don't see any message in this movie that would be bad for children. I don't. As a parent, I don't see anything that would be bad. Full, bitter, mean-spirited pile of misandrous dog shit instead. Ah, it's misandrous. You you love throwing those words around, don't ya? And I can't help but wonder how many future man-hating psychopaths are going to be created because of this film. It's not very often- Oh my god. <laughs> and I say that- I wonder how many uh, uh women-hating uh misogynists are going to be made watching your fucking content, bro in my reviews, but if you're a parent and you're thinking about taking your kids along to see Barbie, then the drinker recommends you skip this one and do literally anything else with them. Believe me, you'll thank me later. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. You know, he is, he's usually more, uh, like, like, it's not subtle, but like, a lot more subtle than that. He usually doesn't wear it, like, quite so it's just right there like as soon as the video opened he's like oh this is man hating propaganda oh i'm so fucking triggered by the movie about uh, uh sentient life size dolls it's it's weird um i guess it's kind of nice for will jordan to not be quite so hidden yeah like he he, he usually hides it better it's usually just like you like, a sesh, pretty much for the reviews especially, his projections, like when he does, like, a trailer and projection of the, what the series will be, those will get cringe pretty quickly. But, like, for actual fucking reviews, he's usually way more subtle, and then he does, uh, he sneaks in the right-wing propaganda. That, that one was just pure garbage. Absolute garbage. Uh, Will Jordan, um, you're losing touch. Um, you're, you're going full right-wing. Which I guess is nice. You know, it's nice that you're more obvious, uh, more out there. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth.